necessitated. You need a guide to show you how we get through a situation like this, to give you resources and to help you get out of the emotional pea soup fog of dealing with a crisis and the resulting fallout. I've been there and I'm here to help you. Out of the fog. If you weren't emotionally bound up in your situation, you would have more clarity. You would be able to see your best options for dealing with whatever comes up. If the version of yourself who has already walked through this rock bottom and come out the other end could go back in time and give you, the you right now, some advice, what would she say? Would she tell you to slow down, to stop rushing, that you don't have to have all the answers today? Would the future you recommend not making any major decisions without reviewing them first, particularly while you're still in the fog? Would she tell you that normal is going to look different for a while, but that you will feel normal again? In case we haven't invented time travel by the time you read this book, I'm here to tell you all of the above. I developed the Boots formula to help you learn to make choices have a life shift and make great things happen based on your individual values and best life vision. A change is gonna happen and it's worth it. There is a stage where it feels like everyone in your life is picking at you. Life itself may seem like it's trying its best to stop you from doing whatever you want to do. All you hear is, that's a stupid idea. And that's never gonna work. And who do you think you are? One of the hardest things for people to do is to realign and possibly walk away from anything and anyone that conflicts with their value systems. But you are going to discover that power within yourself. Through the activities and examples in this book, you will discover your true north and will be able to easily do what is needed to move forward with your life. Anything that hurts you, that doesn't resonate for you, that fights against what you want and believe in, you are going to give it the boot. Once you have turned your rock bottom moment into a positive, beautiful life shift, you can live your life on your terms. Your life will probably look different, but you get to design it this time. You are taking your life back and you are in charge, not anybody else. Sooner than you can imagine, You'll be in the career of your dreams or the relationship you always wanted. Because you are going to learn to develop healthy boundaries. Because you are going to do things differently along the way from here to there. You will begin to attract the people, the job, the place to live, all of the opportunities that align with who you are, your essence, your truth, not anybody else's, or even society's expectations of the way you're supposed to be. Once you have accepted that you are in charge of living your life and you begin to embody living your truth, people are going to see you. They're going to be inspired by you. Then you're going to hear, hey, can you show me how you did that? I want to do it too. When you assess your peer group and up level according to your life purpose and vision, and once you have created a life shift for yourself, whatever that looks like, your life is not just full, it's fulfilled. Not only do you get more and better sleep, you wake up feeling rested and happy. You know that you're doing what you need to do. Yes. Sometimes your heart will call you to leave certain friends or family members in order to find a more aligned peer group. From what I've seen, however, the ones who leave always return to lead their family and friends to success. Because your friends are more in alignment with your beliefs and value system, they support you while also pushing you toward your personal best. Life still involves work, but as a whole, it feels far more effortless. But you don't have to wait for the right person, right job, or right investment opportunity to show up. You can start living now so that every moment as you go forward through the process of recovering from rock bottom and redesigning your life is one more step to being the best version of you. The one who came... 
All right. If you are looking to reinvent life on your terms, if you are grieving, experiencing financial turmoil, career shifts, relationship problems, parenting, elder care, victims of abuse, breaking free from an addiction, or seeking an overall business and lifestyle redesign, then you may need a reboot. It is not size fits all. Just like a pair of boots or a bra. So the formula is designed to help you through any situation. Are you ready to make more money in your business by telling your heartfelt vulnerable story? Hi, I'm Leanne Clune from Radiant Books and join me on the Sheila Mack Show where I'm going to talk about making more income, impact and creating a legacy by sharing your story in a highly leveraged collaboration book, sparking unlimited possibilities for you and your business. Leanne Clune, Radiant Books. See you then. Are you ready for a reboot? Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. History reminds us those hit hardest often become the change makers. This year, we've all hit crazy economic, social, and emotional rock bottoms. We all get knocked down. Something hits globally, locally, personally. It affects our health, finances, our relationships. We have to recreate a business or career. Each show, Sheila and her special guest will be sharing their reboot stories, guiding you with real solutions to upgrade and up-level emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. Here on NBC's KCAA Radio. If you're ready to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and bra straps, enjoy a listen. Here's Sheila. Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. Here we have real people sharing real stories and actionable steps to help you reinvent, rebuild, and reboot your business and personal life on your terms. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and today we have special guest, Leanne Clune. Leanne is the creator and publisher of the Radiant series of collaboration books. She has 16 years running a professional finance company, and over that time, she served hundreds of clients and saved them millions of dollars collectively. Leanne added a publishing arm to her company in 2020. In August 2021, her first collaboration book, Radiate Visionary Women, Igniting the Light in Others, hit Amazon Australia number one's bestseller overnight in her sleep the night before it officially launched. On launch day, her book reached number one Amazon Australia bestseller in seven categories, including women mentoring and coaching and small business. Radiant, Radiant Books exists to increase the income impact and to create a legacy for soulful entrepreneurs. All right. Welcome to the show, Leanne. Hi, Sheila. Thank you. I'm so excited to be on here today. Yes, it's great to have you. And um, my my show actually came about based on my new best-selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. And I wrote it right before our pandemic, like literally wow. coming out when the pandemic hit. <laughs> and so, oh, wow. so it was on point. And I'm wondering if you have a time in your business or personal life where you experienced a tough situation that you can share with the audience and how you got back on track. Yes, absolutely. And I think all of us entrepreneurs, I mean, I know all of us entrepreneurs go through tough times, Sheila. And um, it was five years ago that my husband and I decided that we were going to move our family into state because we had this really strong calling that we needed to move to the Gold Coast. And it was very much an intuitive calling, but it was so strong that we knew that, um, <coughs> excuse me, we knew that if we didn't do it, we may regret that. Yeah. So we gave ourselves 12 months. We thought, you know what, we'll try it for 12 months. Mm -hmm. And um, I had an established finance business in Western Australia. And we, um, I thought it's just going to be easy, you know, like we'll just go over there. And honestly, it was so, so challenging. And I... Um, I basically had to start my business again from scratch, which I really did not expect being so established in my industry. 
Um, I had some collaborations that were going to happen when I got to the Gold Coast and they just did not work. And that was me standing up for my values and not accepting right. anything less. So, um, yeah, it was a really challenging time. We didn't know anyone. <laughs> and we're like, why on earth did we do this, you know? But um, fast forward five years later and it was an extremely amazing decision to do that. Mm. Yes, there's something beautiful about being guided. And mm. I, I also have a second home, my main home, which is in another state by a lake and it's beautiful. And I moved actually November 2019. So before all this craziness happened, yeah. and I felt incredibly guided. Yeah. To move. And it didn't even make sense to my mental mind, if that makes sense. It yeah. was such a pulling and a guiding. And, yes. and it has blessed my family so much. And they all kind of moved over <laughs> over <laughs> the last what, year and a half or so, almost two years now. They moved over, a lot of them with me. And uh, I still go back and forth. And my other home is rented out to a great uh, relative that, that pays well still, even through this time where people aren't paying their rent. So it yeah. worked out perfectly. And lots of friends says, oh, my gosh, you dodged a bullet because you left a, a state that was very um, locked down now, <laughs> so to speak. Wow. And so yeah. I was like, I didn't know what was going to happen. But but that guiding, it's hard to listen with with that um, our mental mind telling us yeah. you know, the well, it doesn't pencil. I mean, as a CPA, you know, what I'm talking. it doesn't pencil. <laughs> what are you talking about? But when you listen to your heart. It, it does unfold to a beautiful place. So how did you work through that kind of a struggle of making this choice to make such a move with your family um, and having that real logistic mind? Of, <laughs> yay. How did that it work? was, um, I had to throw myself into the inner work. There was no other way, you know, um, I was blaming myself and always been a real high achiever, but it really was a blessing in disguise because it made me dive deep into the inner work and um, remove anything that wasn't serving me. And I can now see, like, it's incredible what happened from that move after we got over that huge hump. <laughs> that initial, you know, mm -hmm. where everything seemed to um, to not work out for us and it was just unbelievable, you know. We just never expected that. Right. So, so much inner work. I work on myself, releasing, releasing old stuff, old emotions, attachments, you know. Um, yeah, just really deep, deep work. Yep. Yes, it's so interesting. And then somehow you you came up with a collaborative book i'd love to hear how that showed up in your life <laughs> yeah so i built up my finance business here on the gold coast and i've always said that i've got a book in me or several books in me so i've spent 16 years working in finance and when you work in finance you know people have to tell you everything yeah. um there's no secrets in finance to do it effectively i have to know every where every dollar is and deep, dark secrets would often come out. And I thought, gee, my life's pretty boring, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, due to client confidentiality, I was never able to um, say any of these stories, of course. But I've got so many people live these amazing lives mm. and they're telling me and I can see it all adds up. When I look at their books and everything, it adds up. And I started doing a lot of work with entrepreneurs and small business owners, you know, being one myself. I attract those sort of clients and they all had these incredible, huge stories within them and too busy to really, or not even thinking about right, writing them in a book. Mm. And they're incredible. And I really do believe that the higher you want to go in life, the higher your challenges are, like it's, it's linked. Yeah. And, you know, that was why I went through those challenges because I was levelling up by moving. And so I got thrown massive challenges from that. It's like, you really want this? <laughs> take this, take this. <laughs> and um, so it was last year during COVID, my finance business slowed 
And I actually had some time to really think into what I wanted to do and how I wanted to transition it more online um, because my finance business was a traditional face-to-face, -face, you know, in an office, go and see clients. And with COVID, I thought I have to change it. I've got to make it more online, more Zoom calls. Um, and I had this real calling again to work with groups of people and expand and go bigger. Mm. So that was very strong. And I was um, not listening to that. I was like, no, I'm too busy. I've got my three kids and everything's busy. And, but it just kept getting louder and louder from the universe and I needed to go bigger. Wow. So, during COVID, oh, and I also realised what happens when you don't listen to the universe. Like I didn't want another slamming. Um, yes. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. So um, I knew that I had to do it. And then, you know, once you say okay and you follow the guidance, stuff opens up for you. And so I got the opportunity to be in a multi-author book during COVID. So I wrote that chapter and the... Um, it was all about increasing your business through writing strategically in a multi-author book. I thought, well, you know, I've written a lot over the years, but not so much about me and about my challenges. So I found it quite challenging to actually write the chapter um, because it was about me. Mm. And But when I did, I saw a huge, huge increase in my business. Wow. And it was mainly due to that book and all of the visibility around that book and also me speaking my truth and telling these heartfelt stories that, look, a lot of us that are high achievers, we don't, we don't dwell there, you know. We, mm -hmm. Things happen and we pick ourselves up and we just keep going and we can really underestimate our challenges as high achievers, particularly the entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. and yeah. just kept going and, and not, I mean, we don't want to stay there and dwell there. But when you write about them, they're very inspirational to other people, particularly starting out in business. Right. Yes, that's so good. Mm -hmm. and so how long did that take you to put together or somebody else put the collaboration together? How did that? So, yeah, someone else put it together. It was a couple of months. It went bestseller, international bestseller. Um, I was the only finance person within that group. It was about 28 women. Mm -hmm. But I absolutely could see the um, benefit of writing with a whole group of other like-minded people. Yes. And I instantly increased my networks um, by, you know, not just the 28 authors but all the people that they know as well because we were putting stuff out on social media and really getting a lot of visibility from it. And that continued for months. Mm. And I just thought this is such a, um, a good add-on to my existing finance business because I'm all about increasing the cash flow of entrepreneurs and my clients, and that's what I've done for 16 years. Okay. I never saw myself as running a publishing company. Mm. <laughs> and this is where the following the guidance comes in. I got the opportunity to actually create my own publishing company a few months after that book launched. That's great. And I just knew that I had to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that was the intuition and not the mind, like you say. Right. Right. Every cell was screaming at me, you've got to do this. You have to do this. This is a perfect synergy for your finance business. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yes. And, you know, it's sometimes we think it's not a synergy and it really is. Yeah. So that's that's something that's so important. And, and sharing those stories, like you mentioned before, those stories are what we need more of right now oh, on our planet. Now, I, I recall, and I shared about this in my book, is when I was five years old, I was staying with a grandmother and grandfather. And she, grandma, had all these elderly friends in their 70s and 80s back when I was five. Okay, so this was mm -hmm. an older grandma. She had adopted my mom, so she was an older mom. Yeah. And so we're sitting, and I'm the child to be seen and not heard in the corner. Mm -hmm. Hear these rich stories from these women. 
And they were at that beautiful point in the life where they did not give a flying duck about the good opinions of others. Mm-hmm. And they, they had made it. So they were financially good. They ran businesses. They were still involved in their businesses at a time when women were kind of looked down upon for running a business. They were mm-hmm. still feminine. I, and stories, this was Los Angeles, California in the USA. So they came from different parts of the planet. And and so I heard a lady from Greece was one of the neighbors, Selma. And then another one was from Iran. And then another one was from, um, she had gone through the whole concentration camp situation as a child, mm. lost everyone and still managed to uh, create a beautiful life after all that hell. And so these stories stayed with me and and this little girl this five-year-old girl i'm sitting there and i'm listening and i think oh my gosh we all have an adventure in life yeah. and i'm gonna make it like them because they made it i'm gonna make it life is not going to be perfect but that's mm-hmm. okay. and it was yeah. real. so when i go to history books in school i was like well this is boring but no i remember the stories these ladies told over the years, they told many stories. And I, even when I had my children, I adopted three, three of my own, so six, imagine. I made sure to have those ladies were still in my life. They were yeah. my adopted extension, the village that had to raise me, I guess. And so those stories, we all have those stories to share. Yeah. And it blesses, It it's like therapeutic when you share your story, definitely, but it's also to help others and to be able to feel the emotion and experience some of that wisdom. That was the greatest wisdom I had was from from those beautiful women. So Mm -hmm. this collaboration book is such a beautiful idea to continue Mm -hmm. our stories, especially now when we need it more than ever. Yeah, and it's so uplifting, you know. The women that I had, I've just published Radiant Visionary Women Igniting the Light in Others. And I particularly called them in because that's what they do. Uh, They're like the light bearer. They've got the torch and they're igniting others. Mm. They're standing up in their truth and, um, you know, they're at the leading edge of business. So it's easy to look at these women and go, well, they've just had it easy. They've got a really good business and (laughs) not see the challenges that they've had, particularly when they don't talk about them so much and they focus on the positives, which is a good thing. Right. Stories make it real. Mm, Yes. And there's something about when you, this show is created so that people can hear different stories, different ideas about how to get back on track Uh, because we're all going through something especially during this time even the strongest of us are like okay this is this is a time and and when you think about it we were created for this time we have the stories behind us our friends people when we tune in to different shows those stories we're we need to hear them yeah, and, and so it's like it keeps us all like the flame lit to move forward, uh, to stay positive for our family, for uh, people that work with us or work for us. We need to keep those stories going for sure. So Absolutely. now writing, writing a book. <laughs> I, <laughs> I was in uh, quite a few collaborative books. Um, the last two before I wrote my book was one with Steve Forbes, um, Successonomics. And then I also did a, a book with a group of Platinums um, with the Tony Robbins group. And it was a, a book oh. for Tony Robbins' birthday present. And so, oh, awesome. so those were two fun collabs that I did. And and then writing my own book. Oh, my gosh. It's like you get a PhD in how to write a book. And yeah. there is so much involved. And when you're able to work with someone like you, especially if you haven't done another collab or your own book, it's a great way to get started without mm-hmm. having to overcommit, especially if you're running a business, of, yes. of raising children, running a business and dealing with everything else right now. <laughs> it's like most of us are. <laughs> yes. It's a great way to get started and get your mm-hmm. message out. And yes. it does help with business. It doesn't matter what business you're in. You know, I have yeah. a, one friend that does uh, stem cell therapy in Los Angeles. I actually have a few that that I know very well there that do that. And one of them, uh, Dr. Darrow, he actually writes a book and has a radio show. And 
you'd think, well, what does that got to do with stem cell? But that's what he teaches about. And that's what he writes about. And it has brought lots of business to him. People fly in oh, all over the absolutely. world yeah. based on that book and the show. Yes, and so, absolutely. Yeah. So you don't have to want to be a writer. No. It's a beautiful way to market your, mm. your business and to get the message out to help more people. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what I've found, like, especially having uh, we, t we teach structured collaboration within the book as well. So, um, you know, business owners, they know that collaboration can be a very effective marketing tool for their business, but um, they're not so much taught how to do collaboration and how not to do collaboration because it can also be disastrous, right? If you do it with the wrong person or it, it cannot work for you and it can become a real headache. But when you've got, you know, 20 to 30 people that are all high achievers and entrepreneurs of different professions and modalities within the one group, all supporting each other, and they come on, on board and they agree to, you know, get into the project and support each other because there is no such thing as competition. Right. <laughs> you know, everyone's got their own unique frequency and take on how they do their business so um what happens is you just get this exponential marketing from everyone else's um you know networks and uh, the visibility is through the roof mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, a lot of my authors said what they really loved was the deep connections that they form because they're talking about deep personal stories right that happened to them Sometimes being a very highly successful entrepreneur at the leading edge of business can be quite lonely. Mm -hmm. And you can end up working long hours and not being able to do, you know, so much of the social stuff and, and kind of it can be quite disconnecting. A lot of my authors have said that and it, they found connection within that group. Mm, yes, yes. Especially now, it's hard to connect with people. We had this two month period where we didn't have to wear masks and they thought it was all safe and I don't know what. Mm. And it was like we went back to normal, close to normal. Yeah. And, you know, since moving here and going back and forth to work um, from one state to the other, I didn't get to meet that many people. And I, mm. my, my office is actually in, in the country club's office. That's where I, I video record these shows. And so yeah. it's kind of strange that nobody came out. And yeah. then when the masks were off, everybody came out and everybody started talking with each other. And we did all kinds of, you know, swim class, exercise class, half the hour dancing. <laughs> uh, I mean, it was great. I met yeah. more people in that short period of time than the entire time I had been here. And, wow. and it's bizarre because it's, I don't know, even if you see people with the masks and I'm not saying masks are good or bad, it just is what yeah. it is. I wear them when I'm told to, it is what it is. But yeah. you don't see the expression. That no. well smile, the, oh yeah. yeah, come over, let's talk, hi. Or maybe, you know, there's an expression of uh, not right now. I, I need to go do my exercise and leave or go do my whatever and leave. And so you kind of don't even know, do I approach this person or not? You know, what, you don't get that emotion. And no. so it gets harder to connect mm. uh, even when you're having a conversation because a lot of what we say is nonverbal. Absolutely. <laughs> and, yeah. and yet, you know, it's it's like we're missing that whole, just the, the expressions on the face, um, you yeah. know, and so you're missing it. And I, I don't know how that's going to affect our little ones, because as they're learning language development, oh. and expression and connection, there's, there's going to be a bit of a disconnect. Mm. And so at the same time, during this time, as families and businesses are, are brought home, sometimes we have to recreate how we do business, reboot mm. our life and our family life. Maybe we have to homeschool and run a business. And, I, you know, I, most of your people in your books were women, right? Yeah, um, my previous one was all women, um, but men are in the next one because okay. they they said we want to be in it. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. So yeah. you know, I think about us women that we have. Uh, okay, we have our families. If you're married or whatever, you have your partner, your significant other, and if you have children, and now mm -hmm. they're home, 
and you've got you're usually the one that I mean they never look at the spouse and say well mm. I'm clean the house today if people come over they're like oh she didn't clean they yeah. I mean, it is the way it is I mean you could say yeah. that, oh we're equal no no <laughs> she no. got to take out one trash can this weekend it's cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like everything else is somehow the magic cleaning fairy shows up and does all this and you're yeah. working six to eight hours a day minimum and you've mm. got the kids so you've got so many distractions your your six to oh. eight hours turns into 12 yeah because of all the distractions you've now become a teacher mm. <laughs> and and oh, because yeah. he's home more guess what now you've got to like clean up full time after oh. everybody else plus and not everybody has the same cleaning ideas you do maybe exactly <laughs> and and yet it's expected if anybody walks in and visits it's on you. Mm, so you're mm. working. <laughs> so there's, <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's really, it's a time. It is a oh, time, yes. at least for me, where I've had to say, okay, what matters most? What can I do? What do I need? When do I need to like forgive myself if it's not perfect? Sure. If, yeah. You know, like, yeah. how do I prioritize the most important? If, mm. if one of my, some of my college kids are home because the school's closed. Yeah. So, my priorities have shifted and I'm mm. like, oh, this time is magic. I get to have time with my adult children and, yeah. and get to do things. And oh man, nobody gets in the way of that time. That's my priority. And it's like, we wouldn't <laughs> have had the time. I often joke and say, it's like a, a long slumber party. And they're like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but still, we want to go out. <laughs> <And> so, <Yeah. laughs> it, is, it is a difficult time. Oh, and sure yes, is. Yet it's like you were saying to me that thing about how the universe will give us little nudges to mm. go in the direction we need to go mm. or that will help the most um, be the highest and best good. So mm. my mantra is the universe is conspiring for our highest and best good at all times, even yeah. through these times. Absolutely. And so that's something that, that has helped me when I'm like, oh, why didn't this work out or why can't? I make this make sense. And sometimes it's because there's something even better unfolding and we've yeah. got to let go of the control that we want to have, or we think we have. Yeah. Uh, obviously we have less control over things than we thought we did for sure. That's right. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so it's that, nu and, and the universe kind of nudges you and it's yeah. like a sweet little, Oh, nope. Let me push you this way. Let me push. You. And then all of a sudden it's a slap. Oh, Mama, yeah. Mama universe gives you a slap and then it's a kick and then it's yeah. a, okay, you know what? Now you're, you're really starting over again. Yeah. You really and, need to listen and, now. I'm going to yeah, slam yeah, you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we've, you've got, we've got your attention, you know, it's like, okay, <laughs> yeah. now I'm going to say yes to what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. And okay. With that, because everything else is really painful. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it is. It's such a, it was so amazing to be in the space with 22 other women that were all like-minded and yes. all this stuff's going on in the external world and we had our little radiant bubble. Mm, yes, <laughs> yes. Isn't that great? What a perfect time. Yeah. And so your first book already came out. Um, mm. And what's the name of that book? That was Radiant Visionary Women Igniting the Light in Others. Okay, yeah. beautiful. I love that. And now yeah. to have another one in the works. Yes. Yeah, so um, calling in authors for the second one, which is male and females who have had, you know, they've had a lot of experience in their fields. So I'm calling in the professionals um, that have had 15 years or so experience in their field and they're at the top of their, their game. And they've got a story to tell and they may not have told it before, but um, it's called, so it's all the Radiant series. Oh, nice. So this one's Radiant Stories from Soulful Entrepreneurs. Mm, nice. And, um, yeah, I've got some really high-level entrepreneurs. Like I've got, you know, a previous solicitor and um, who's now running a virtual assistance agency. Mm. But, um, my accountant has jumped on board. <laughs> Nice. Um, yeah, so I've got some, I've got a uh, finance specialist that I used to work with in Western Australia. Actually, she's jumped mm -hmm. on board and um, it's going to be an incredible book because the authors have already started bouncing ideas for their stories off me and they have got some beauties. 
<laughs> wow. Yes. Now, give give an idea for those listening in. Maybe there's someone interested in getting involved in this chapter book or one of your future ones. What what would be involved? How would they sign up? What would the workload look like? What does it all look yeah. like? So we try to make it as fun as we can. And like you said, writing a whole book, it's daunting. It's very time consuming. You've got so, you don't know where to start. You know, if you haven't done it before, you've got to go and do all this stuff, like work out a cover and all that. So we take care of all that. The cover's designed, every, the book's edited, it's formatted. All you have to do is come to the training. We hold weekly, sometimes twice weekly training for about six weeks. So it's a short, intense burst of training to write that 3,000 to 3,500 word chapter. And you're very much guided throughout that time. But you're guided within the whole group as well. So it's a very supportive group. And you find that, you know, most of the authors get their chapter out within about four weeks. And it is the right one. They'll know when it's the right one. I, I guide them to do it intuitively rather than being in their head because it should just flow out. Mm. So we help them with those processes as well. <laughs> um, we do all the marketing and uh, I get it, you know, I get it put on Amazon and published on Amazon. I get it published on hardcover. So it's everything's done and it's a really great introduction if you've been thinking about writing a book. Or you may have even written a book and it can't, you know, unfortunately I do hear that a lot of people will write a book and not have a strategy behind them uh -huh. and it doesn't go anywhere near as well as what they had been told or what they expected. Yeah. So yes, it's I a good way to. Marketing your book after the book is done is huge. And it, it's, it's something that a lot of people don't realize that's when the work actually starts. Yeah. After you do, I don't know, six months, a year of writing yeah. and then you get your book out, that's when you start. Yes. And, you know, and, and exhausted by then. <laughs> and and it, it's really this in, intuitive thing of if you're guided to do something. Now, for my story of my book, it was something first I ran into someone. They said, write a book in a couple of weeks. I said, all right, well, I've always wanted to do my own and I've written for other people. I used to do screenwriting work uh, at, with the studios for many okay. years so, so yeah. it's a different type of writing, but it's still something yeah. I've always done. And so it was interesting because I said, okay, well, I'll try it out. And then I was like, mm, that's not enough time. And I want it to be more than that. Mm. And I ended up working, actually helping out with another event um, in a breakthrough group uh, with, with Jay Abraham. And I ran into a publisher mm -hmm. there and he said, oh, wow, you know, this is a book and a, and a brand and a da, 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 da. And it became much bigger than I knew yes. with a book. And so I said, yes, let's learn about what I need to do. And I did, I, you know, by the time I was done, it was about a year and a PhD and, and how to do this book later that all the things yeah. you don't think about or to connect it with the brand, to make a business out of it or to help have it help your business. And then the publishing aspect, you know, they took care mm -hmm. of that. There was a lot, there was five editors. So wow. hopefully nobody's found any mistakes that I've heard of yet. <laughs> oh, why? And I actually read it a few times through. And, yeah. and so there's so much to it and so there many is. ways to promote the book afterwards. Mm -hmm. And if you're in a collaborative team, it's the group and how you can all, I mean, just imagine if there's 21 of me promoting one book. Oh. It's See incredible. I, that is because then mm. you're you're getting lots of sales and you're <laughs> you're getting shares and it continues to have a life as long as the group has that momentum and continues the work. Yeah, exactly right. And yes. it's just such an amazing project for everyone to be involved in because they've each got their own businesses, but they're each involved in this radiant book as well. Right. Um, so they've got such ownership over it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just say to them, like, the more you put it out there, the more it is beneficial for all of us. Right, right. Yes. Absolutely all of us. So, yeah, it's just been an incredible experience. And, you know, my authors, I ask them in one word to describe mm -hmm. how they found the project. And um, I got the words back and they were just phenomenal. You know, they said mm -hmm. life-changing, um, just the growth was off the charts, the personal growth. Right. 
from doing such a project. So it's that mm -hmm. as well. And I think that's often underestimated. Yes. Personal growth from writing a book or writing a chapter in a book is huge. Mm, yes. It's not just yes. three and a half thousand words, you know. Exactly. And then not mm. only that, but then after it's interviews like this. Yeah. And, you know, you can do a whole tour on radio, TV, on, on yes. uh, podcasts. You can do all kinds of different articles. It, it just having the book even you know a chapter book with someone else a collaborative book is a way to get your foot in to many other doors sure that is. are not open for you so yeah. that's definitely a fun thing to do now we are running to the end of our hour so i'd love for you to share how people can connect with you uh learn more about the project yeah absolutely the books that you've already published Sure. So they can go to my website. It's I try to keep it simple. It's www.leanneclune.com.au. And if you go to leanneclune.com.au forward slash apply, there'll be all a landing page all about the book, this next book project, and um, all the different levels that you can join at because we have got, you know, um, We've got a, a huge different amount of um, projects that came out of the first one. Mm -hmm. So we've said, you know what, you can join, you can do the book or you can do, you know, more intense coaching and really use the momentum that's created from the book. That is, it's colossal, the momentum from these projects after months and months of working together and pushing it out on social media. Um, so, yeah, just go to the leanneclean.com.au forward slash apply and have a read, watch the videos, the testimonials from authors. All right. That's wonderful. Thank you again, Leanne, for being a special guest. Thank on you. The show. All right. And for those tuning in, we'll be back after these messages. I'd love to share with you a brief meditation. This is a free meditation for when you are getting ready to reboot your life. This is a great way to get grounded first before you start doing all the other work to just take a moment and get grounded. So here we go. Welcome to the Boots Meditation. I'm Sheila Mack, your guide. If you are driving, pull over to a safe space or just listen and do the breathing. Breathing in through your nose, breathing out through your mouth. And one more time, breathing in gratitude through your nose, breathing out all the cares of the world in through your nose and out through your mouth. Now slowly raise your hands to your sides and then overhead while closing your eyes and continuing to completely let go of anything that's no longer serving you. Breathing in peace breathing out anything you no longer need. Raise your hands and stay connected to your breath as you're slowly breathing in and out. And now, as your hands are raised to the sky, give thanks. Give thanks to your hands, to the sky. Give thanks to the clouds and the loving light energy of the sun. And next, as you continue to slowly breathe in and out, pull your hands slowly down to the ground, bringing the love and light energy from the heavens to you and then let your hands softly embrace the ground. Breathing in and out. Thank your source. Thank God, creator, and your dear Mother Earth. Ask for the grounding you may need to start rebuilding, reinventing, and rebooting your business and life. 
this time guided and completely on your terms, coming from a peaceful space and place of groundedness. Continue feeling the ground beneath you, breathing in sunlight, breathing out love. And next, continue your breathing. And now you're going to breathe in through your nose and out through your nose. Breathing at your own pace. Make a gentle turn with your arms outstretched a little bit less than shoulder height and slowly turn safely to your right side. And as you're doing this, continuing your breathing at your own pace in and out, Gratitude in, love and light out. Send gratitude for all the small right actions that you are choosing now and each right action that you are going to take moving forward as you turn toward your right. Continue your breath work and slowly turn now toward the right rear of the room or outdoors where you're seated, holding space and gratitude, breathing in and out. Space and gratitude are being held for what has transpired behind you. Give thanks for the past, for the times you've learned, the lessons you've learned, the times you've listened, and the times you've made it victoriously toward the beautiful present now. Continue your breath work in gratitude, returning slowly to the front facing position, and then let your hands peacefully be planted back down on the earth. Again, slowly taking a deep breath in and out, breathing in love, breathing out light, taking in even more gratitude and releasing out any person, any place, or anything which is not aligned with your current life purpose, breathing out anything that's not aligned with your current mission Breathing in love and light and breathing out anything that no longer serves you. Continue your breathing and slowly raise your arms to your sides, straight out, slightly lower than your shoulder height, and then slowly turn toward your left. Send gratitude to all your loved ones, your family, your friends, people in the community that have helped bring you beautiful things. Think about even the clothes on your back or the food on your table and all the people involved in making that happen. Give gratitude to those people you've never met that have now put so much love and light in your life and giving you such incredible strength. Breathing in love, breathing out gratitude. Stay turned toward your left and listen to your breath. Be thanks, thankful for your breath. This year especially, thankful sending out prayers and healing blessings to all that may be struggling with breath right now. Be in gratitude. Be in gratitude for your breath. And now as you're still turned toward your left, remember that the left is your heart space. Your heart space is on the left of your body. So give thanks for your heart space, for your heart that breathes, breathes 
and gives love and light and receives love and light energy every day. Now as you continue your breath, breathing in love and light, breathing out gratitude, turn toward the left rear of the room or outdoors where you are seated. A gentle turn while you're continuing to breathe in love and light and breathe out gratitude. Breathing in gratitude. Breathing out forgiveness. Forgive any person, place, or thing that needs to be released. Send them love and a prayer or blessing for healing. Surely anyone that harms another comes from a very hurt space. Set them free as you set yourself free, opening up your left heart center to the present, to the gifts of the present. Now turn slowly back toward the center, hands slowly floating down to the ground as you continue to breathe in love and light. Breathing out gratitude, feeling the earth beneath you holding you. Decide in all you are called to do as you rebuild and recreate your life, guided and on your terms, that you will be in a state of blissful beingness. Keep this mantra. In all I am doing, it is who I am being. And every day I will breathe in love and light. I will breathe out gratitude. Now slowly raise your hands to your heart center, to the prayer position, and say this very simple two word prayer mantra. Thank you. Thank yourself for showing up every day, for getting you through the ups and downs in your life's journey. Thank your loved ones, family, friend, the earth, source, love and light. Give thanks, saying thank you as a simple prayer mantra as you continue to peacefully breathe in love and light and breathe out gratitude and you are now ready to slowly open your eyes slowly still on the heart still thinking of this heart center and how you can give love and kindness to all that need extra love and kindness this year including yourself now you're in a beautiful, blissful, grounded space, and you're ready to apply the Boots formula to your life from a calm and solidly grounded space. I'd like to invite you to take my free Introduction to the Boots Formula course. This is a great way to continue past your meditation where you're going to use this formula as a tool and a guide to help you reinvent, rebuild, and redesign your life guided and on your terms. You may get the free course, Introduction to the Boots Formula, at www.sheilamack.com. Thank you for listening. I wish you life, love, laughter, and light. Namaste. And now I have some homework for you. I would love for you to grab a copy of my new best-selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. It is now available on Audible 
as well as on Amazon and Kindle and at www.sheilamack.com. I will be donating a book or course. If you look online, you'll see the courses I offer as well to women's shelters across the United States and Canada whenever a course or book is purchased. So check it out. And I look forward to sharing more with you next time. As always, I wish you life, love, laughter, and light. If you are just tuning in, this is NBC's Sheila Mack Show here on KCAA Radio, the station that leaves no listener behind. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and today I have a couple of announcements. First, I would like to hear from you. That's right. I would love to hear from you, to be honest. I want to know what your breakthrough is, what your reboot is, how are you reinventing and rebooting your life, what shows would you like to hear more of, what information do you need to help you get back on track this year. And to do that, the best way to connect with me is actually through my new YouTube channel, and that is Sheila Mack Show on YouTube. And there you can see past recordings, and you can also see other um, information and shares that I have. And I would love for you to share in the comments there what you're needing more of and what you're rebooting this year and how we can help you get back on track. 